Hey, what's up? Jason here. Recently, I've been playing around with a little space shooter console style game, and I thought people might be a little bit interested in just how the controls are set up and how the controllers work. Um, so I figured I'd share this. It's not anything that's final. It's still kind of a work in progress um, control system and game. Like I said, just kind of messing around, but I wanted to share it anyway. So right here, you can see I've got four join spots right there, and I got just a couple Xbox One controllers. And then whichever one I hit A on, let's see. Oh, oh, if the window has focus, whichever one I hit A on becomes the first player. This will become the second player. And then this will become the third player. And then I can just pick their ships. Uh, um, here, let's just pick a couple ships. And maybe I'll pick these <coughs> ships. And I'm gonna mute the audio there because it's gonna get loud. But you can see like each controller just controls a ship and they all just kind of work independently and it doesn't matter which um which controller it is for which player they just bind at runtime based off of when you hit the a button so i just kind of want to show how that works and um hopefully it's a little bit helpful for people oh wait this is my favorite ship right there which one is it there we go just drop out some bombs and shoot some lasers do lots of fun stuff okay anyway let me get on to the actual code and just kind of show how it works and hopefully it's a little bit helpful to others. So I've got my game set up right here with four players. There's four player objects. You can see each one here has a color, a starting position. I'll probably rip that out and change it later. And then a player number. So I got one, two, three, and four. They each have a number and that shows up. Um, it matches to these text things right here. And then it matches the little arrows that were in game to give you an idea of which player is which. And then the other thing to notice is that each player also has a player input. So let's take a look at that. The player input, um, right now it's a little bit bloated and a little bit messy because I've been working with adding AI. But the core of it is we keep track of some axes here. We've got horizontal and vertical. And these are strings for the names of the axis. Then we've got strings for the names of the buttons and this trigger axis isn't used right now. We also keep an integer for the controller number. And then here we have some properties that can actually just be read out, the thrust and the uh, horizontal movement, so that's just for rotation. So let me scroll down and if you look here, um, let's see, where is it? Set controller number. So what eventually happens is I have a mapping script that I'll show in a minute it calls into the player to assign the player to a controller and then the player assigns its input to that controller number then all I do here is create the axis or set the axis string for J which is just a joystick the controller number and then horizontal or vertical for the vertical axis and all we're really doing is this is going to be like J1 horizontal J1 vertical J1 controller number assuming that this is controller number one if it's like controller number four it'll be fours here and then in my um, in my input settings so if I go to project settings and input and I still need to rearrange this and reorder it but um, here I've got all my axes just set up like this so I've got J1 horizontal which is just um, horizontal on the joystick one J2 horizontal horizontal on joystick two and then the same pattern repeats all the way through so I've got it for one through four I actually have it through one through six sorry of just about everything this is why I need to reorder these I need a, a nice easy way to reorder those I'll have to look at that later though but all of these exist for every number one through six and they're all mapped and then the input system the player input script just maps to that and then when I want to read from it so let's jump right back into that code so if I want to read um, whether or not a button is down. And right now I've only hooked up A and B, the only two buttons that I'm actually using in this game right now. So I just read to see if the input for the string name of this button that was determined when we set the controller, and we just check to see if it's down or not. And then here, this is just a check to see if it's a bot. And if it is a bot, I'm using some override system. I think I'm gonna rip this all out though and kind of change it up. But for now it kind of works as I set it as a bot and then the bot in its bot AI script can adjust and set these to be true or false if I want it to fire or B is to use the secondary ability since it can't actually just write to the input. So it kind of fakes the input I guess. So that way my, I guess one of the reasons I wanted to try it this way is that um, 
there's no um, faking of power. There's no way for the ships or the bots to be more powerful just because they're bots. They're using the exact same input system to control everything. And they can be better at steering, though. Um, and then the other thing that I exposed here, like I said, was the horizontal axis and then the thrust. So if you look at this, in a fixed update, actually, I'm not sure why I was doing it in fixed instead of just update, I just checked to see that there's a controller number assigned, and if there is, we get the values for these from the axes that are assigned. So let me show you the part where I actually assign these. And that is in this player to controller assigner. So if you look in here, I've just got this game object with a script. It's really pretty simple uh, until I added the bot stuff at least. And then um, all this does is go through in the update. I loop one through six, that's all six controller numbers. And I also, by the way, support keyboard inputs. So five and six are actually keyboard mappings. They're not controllers. So here we go, we loop through all six. We check to see if they hit the Y button for one of those, and if they did, I just add a bot. This is the only time that I ever read the Y button though. Uh, the more important part though is right here. So I check to see if they hit A, and if they have, I call add player controller, and I pass in the number that they pressed. And then here, I just add it to a list of assigned integers. I don't even remember why I was doing that. There was a reason for it, but. I don't think it was super important to this. But then I just go through all of my player panels. These are the UI panels. And I check to see if they already have a controller assigned. So let's look at those real quick. The player panels, um, let's find these. They're under the UI right here. So under here, under here, I have a player one panel, player two panel, player three. You can see these right here if I just uncheck them, disable them. Oh no, I've ruined a. Uh, ruin my layout, I'll fix that in a moment. But here, each one of these also has a player that's assigned. So they're each mapped directly to their player. All right, player two, this is actually, I don't know why the name here got messed up. So this is player two panel is linked up to player two. And then the player three panel, let me fix that real quick, is linked to player three. So let's go back to the code and see why that matters. So right in here, when I, assign it to a panel. So I just pick whichever panel doesn't have a controller assigned. And in here we just find the player and we get its input, the player input, and then set the controller number. So this is kind of how it all gets linked. Now I've thought about adjusting this so that the, um, so I set it on the player instead of the panel and I probably will because I don't really like going through the UI for this. But it essentially just needs to get down to this point where we're calling input dot set controller number and then that input will, um, will get updated and set, set everything kind of work. So the last part I want to show is uh, on this player input, like I said, I've got all these axes and I've got the, um, the buttons here. I've got the check to see if there's a button down. And the ships actually need to check to see if these things are set, right? So I need to check the horizontal axis on my ship. So how do I do that? Let's take a quick look. I've got a ship here and then we've got a here, let's go into which one do I want to go into let's go into ship first so on the ships when I spawn a ship I bind each one to a player and the players input so here you can see it's got a reference to the player input it can only be set privately it's publicly accessible because I have other components on the ship that want to read the input as well like there's a shield system that you can recharge shields and you hold it down and it needs to read the player input to see if you know, if you're holding down the button to recharge it. Same with the weapons. They all just kind of read from this thing's input system. So let's let's see, let's take a look. Where's the um, set player right here. So this is what gets called. When I spawn a ship, I set the player to whatever player it is. And here we set the player number. Not super useful anymore. The important part right here though is that I set the input I just get the player input component from there, from the player that's set, and cache it. Um, and then let's let's find the last part, the ship motor. Like this is the other part that's kind of important. This is where I actually read from it. So in the ship motor, like I said, we just cache the ship, and then we um, we don't actually do this anymore. This is not used. So where's the part where we read it? Here it is. So in fixed update. 
I get the thrust, and here I'm just caching it in a variable so I can read it later and debug it easier. But we call ship.input.thrust and we set that here, and then we use that to determine how fast the ship is going. So again, it's more of just a matter of getting a reference to the input, and then that input is bound to a controller. Then it doesn't matter what controller that's bound to, it'll just work. So like I said, this is still very much a work in progress. It's a bit dirty, a bit messy, and it's gonna get a lot cleaner as I get more time to work on it. It's just kind of a fun little hobby project. Um, but I, I think it's kind of useful just setting up controllers and I wanna eventually build up a much cleaner, more robust controller system sometime in the future. So if you're building a controller system, I'd say try something like this out. If you have some suggestions though, or recommendations or just questions, feel free to just drop them in the comments below. I'd, I'd love to see what other people are doing, what other people think. So again, thanks again for watching. Don't forget to like and hit subscribe if you actually like the video. Um, see you later.